Lots of lip syncing, no sound. How about that? So I, I was just explaining, since you couldn't hear me, um, I spent like an hour and a half trying to set up OBS, and as soon as I clicked the button, um, it decided to uh, post something to YouTube, and I saw people streaming into the chat room, because I was actually thinking about doing this um, tomorrow instead. But I guess I'm doing it tonight, since uh, people were here all waiting for me. Ah, much better. Okay, you guys can hear me. And then all of my uh, screens got kind of messed up here too, so we'll see. Um, does anyone in the chat room know how to uh, set up OBS so that chat shows up on on the screen itself? Yeah, everyone's like, yay, sound. Well, on my objective tonight, I have two things that I need to get done. I uh, I have a sample project that I need to put together for a developer doing some educational content that um, has been bugging us to get access to some of our utilities. So we have a utility for our wand that lets you pick up objects with rigid bodies on them. And I've used it exactly one time and everybody else is um, you know, a little bit too busy to make a, a sample project. So. I'm going to try to build that first, and then I wanted to um, uh, see if I can come up with a game idea. Um, it could be a complete disaster or not. Who knows? Sometimes I make some fun stuff. I tend to use a lot of ChatGPT to do the coding, so it's kind of a mixed bag of how it, um, how it works out. But uh, maybe you all can uh, give me some, some feedback on it. Okay, I see some in the chat room. Someone says, docs menu at the top, I believe. So maybe this is for chat on the screen. Well, I see the chat. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Let me try one thing real quick. Um, let's see if I can just add a window. No, no. Add. Yeah, add a window, window capture. Oh, I hear the cats are getting some food. They're getting, gonna be excited about that. Okay. Sorry, I'm not seeing ability to select the chat window. Hmm. All right, we may just have to live without it. Okay, uh, let me run you through a couple things that I've set up on <laughs> I broke it. Oh. I knew it was going to be a disaster for sure. All right. So I've set up a couple screens here in OBS so that we can go through things. So this is going to be mixed cast. Um, so I have on the system here, I have a webcam that's putting da pointing down at the game board that's right next to me. So you'll be able to see, in theory, what um, is being displayed from the glasses superimposed from that webcam uh, live video feed of that. Then I have uh, my programming window up here, which um, in theory I can I can alt tab different things in. So, so we can take a look at stuff, including good old chat GPT, which I use way too much of, but it works great. And yeah, that's that. Um, why don't I get started? Um, I'm gonna show you how you set up your first scene. I already loaded a Unity um, project here. It's Unity 2021. Point three. Um, I believe we go back to Unity 2018 point something. So your your luck may vary um, if you go back beyond 2018. And uh, uh, this is just a blank scene here. So let's go ahead and do, 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 how do I rename it? Scenes. Let's rename this. grabber. Okay. 
So um, this grabber utility is pretty new and a little fresh. So it allows you to do different things with the magic wand. So it'll raycast out, it'll grab game objects. Um, it'll also do a, uh, a, uh, an angular grab too. So it'll auto snap two objects on the scene. So you can kind of tune that stuff. It also does this really nice uh, grabbing function where it raycasts through between the center of your eyes through the tip and then out to the game board for the objects you can grab, which is really nice, which keeps your wrist in a nice ergonomic um, position. So I like that one a lot, but if all goes well, I'll show you these various um, aspects of it. So first thing we got to do is we get rid of the main camera because it's not you know, particularly useful for the Tilt 5 experience. And then I will pull up the Tilt 5 plugin which you can just download from our website. So you just go there, you know, and drag that into the into the scene. And that'll that'll um, import all the various um, pieces. Oops, I grabbed in grabbed the Mixcast. Uh, this is the plugin for Mixcast. Um, this does the the compositing. So you can get the Max Mixcast SDK for free. Um, from the mixcast.me website. This allows you to use webcams with Tilt 5 and do the compositing on your application. Looks like a lot of folks in the chat room are telling me how to fix my um, chat issue. Um, probably too complicated for me to solve tonight. Okay, so I just added Mixcast. What's cool about Mixcast is you just have to add the plugin. You don't have to do anything to your scene. So now when we hit play, in theory, um, once we have glasses plugged in, we have the Tilt 5 um, manager in, you'll be able to just see what's being um, projected through the glasses. And what's cool is that it works uh, real time in the editor as well. So you can run up to four players simultaneously in the editor. <laughs> Station says, just needs more capacitors. That's true. Did you recap it if you're into uh, retro computer stuff? Which yesterday night I spent uh, probably about an hour or two hours recapping a, a Toshiba model uh, T1000. I've been trying for several weeks to get a working example of this early 80s laptop that has this really cool aspect ratio monochrome display. and. Uh, Everyone I've gotten, the capacitors have leaked and corroded the board to the point where um, it just doesn't work and it wasn't even salvageable. In fact, maybe I'll go run and grab it a little bit later, but I took one of the carcasses that I was trying to revive and I stuck a full Windows PC. I found a wide aspect ratio VGA monitor with touchscreen, put lithium batteries in it, and then made, took a Raspberry Pi Pico and uh, decoded the keyboard. Uh, so I had a keyboard, the original keyboard, to USB. And I also found a USB 3.5-inch uh, flop, floppy drive and made some mounting brackets and put it in there. So it works like a, um, a modern PC, but also does floppy. Uh, so Nerdful1 asked if it was the Plasma-style screen. No, it wasn't Plasma screen. It was just one of the... Uh, a yeah, passive matrix monochrome, so it was pretty crummy display. I think it was mid to late 80s. All right, I'm going to go digging into my hard drive and find uh, the Tilt 5 SDK. So when you uh, grab the Tilt 5 SDK from our website and install it, it puts it into uh, Windows Program Files Tilt 5. Did I tell everyone I'm not a programmer? So it's going to be pretty clunky. So this is the stuff that gets uh, loaded in uh, when you bring the SDK down. You get some demo apps that you can look at, how you can do some stuff, the drivers, and then the SDK. And then in here is the SDK um, for Unity and Unreal. Um, and someone in the chat room was asking if there were Godot 
uh, plugins, and apparently there is. I've heard um, the Godot team is added to five support. I haven't tried it yet. I think Godot looks pretty cool, but you know, it was such a big learning curve for me to uh, figure out how to use Unity. Just not super motivated to go learn another uh, game engine quite yet. Um, chat room, how is Godot? How's it compare to Unity? Would I be comfortable moving over? <laughs> Not another dev says, okay, you have 56 backseat drivers in ChatGPT. What could go wrong? I don't know. Um, it's going to be the world's best game. All right, so we're going to import the SDK. Um, this has all the little pieces you need. There, there's a bunch of prefabs in here to help you out. Um, the most important one is the, the Tilt 5 uh, prefab. So you just dig down to Tilt 5 prefab. There's two of them in here. There's a legacy one that we leave in there. Let me change this to list view. Um, yeah, there's TIL5 prefab and then there's TIL5 prototype. So TIL5 prototype is legacy. So if you have an old game and you just don't want to change it, an old game that you brought over to TIL5 and you don't want to upgrade any of the features, you can use this one. Otherwise, you just drag in the new one, which is TIL5 prefab. And boom, um, what you see is a game board, you know, in the scene. And so this is really helpful. The game board is what your entire experience is around. This is what the glasses will see. And so there's some cool things that you can do here. Um, let me add, and this is going to be useful for this sample project that I'm building for this, these um, educational developers that want to use our grabber. Um, I'm going to add a couple cubes in here. Duplicate a couple cubes. Let's just get those away from each other a little bit. All right, so right now these cubes, if we get in here closer and we take a look at it, these cubes, when you hit play and you have the glasses turned on, you're going to see the cubes half above the game board surface and half below. And they're going to be kind of medium size here. So, but there's a cool, few cool things you can do. If you go up to the Tilt 5 prefab and you go to the game board, which, by the way, this game board um, can be duplicated as well. And maybe we'll get into that when we start. Um, trying to create a game tonight. Um, but when you duplicate the game board, you can actually assign those to different players. So you could have different viewports into the world. So you can have multiple game boards cruising around in your scene. Um, Mick Mole asked, am I still racing? So I used to race quarter mile dirt track cars, late models, sprint cars, jalopy cars, figure eights, stuff like that. That was in my late teens and early 20s, and I haven't raced since because um, it kind of consumes every bit of your life. So um, it's either have a career or race cars. You kind of can't do both. Um, there was always a joke um, amongst all the racers. Like you would see someone pull up with an awesome car hauler and like this really highly advanced car with all the gizmos on it. And it, the joke was the windows of their house are probably covered with cellophane because they can't afford to fix them. Hi, Adele Reza. Hi, Raza. All right, so uh, here's the game board. Let me show you a few things you can do with the game board. It's really cool. So right now we have these kind of medium size cubes on here. We can go to the inspector and you just scale the game board. Now you'll have some pretty big uh, cubes that would show up, itty bitty ones. So just by scaling the game board, you can scale it to fit your scene or the assets in your scene. So you don't have to mess with scaling the actual assets themselves. You just do that with the game board. There's some other cool, pretty cool things you can do also. You can do cinematics and stuff like fly the game board in and, you know, land on your scene. You can scale it. You can have game characters that are running around the scene. You can um, 
have the game board follow the character. So you can either make it a child of the game character, which usually doesn't work out perfectly because there's lots of weird rotations in a character, or you can just write a simple script or have, have ChatGPT write it for you that uh, lerps the game board along with your character. And, uh, uh, and then of course, if you had four game characters, you have four game boards all assigned to different glasses. And everything is relative uh, between the game board and the glasses. So our glasses are measuring the distance and position and rotation around the game board. So if you move that game board, it's as if in the, this giant virtual world, you're actually moving along with the game board. So that's super handy when you want to do, you know, games where each player may be somewhere unique in the, the space. Uh, so, okay, let's see. I've got mixed cast in here. I've got a couple cubes in here. Let me save, so just in case it crashes. And let's see if mixed cast will come up. Oh, there it is. Um, it looks like, let me drag mixed cast up here. It looks like either the cats or I bumped the camera and I'll show you how you use mixed cast. So I want this screen. So this is one of the sub screens within Mixcast that lets you do different things to set up your, your, um, your camera. So you can have multiple cameras hooked up to Mixcast. So you can have different angles all around the game board. So under physical devices, you can choose the different cameras that you want around your game board. And uh, then once you have them set up where you want, you can do a tilt five calibration. Let me drag that window up here and share that. One moment. All right, so this is the live view through the camera and it's detected the game board. And if I hit apply, so now if you look in the preview window down in the lower left of the stream, you can see that it's more aligned. So um, it's not shifted. So right now we're seeing, you know, part of the skybox is kind of dark gray. So this is actually way off at infinity and we see the cubes. All right, so that's good. Um, I didn't screw anything up yet. So there's a question here. Uh, John asked, did you say you can have more than one board at a time now? So could I put a large sheet of reflector with two boards on it and track it over a 12 foot table? Okay, so there is still kind of a hard coded aspect to the Tilt 5 system. We haven't added any support to uh, deal with multiple game boards, although some of our creative um, developers have done some cool stuff with the new camera, our tangible tracking camera that we gave access to. So you could put a QR code or a marker down. You could look at this game board over here, detect that it's game board one, and then show one scene. And then you could have another game board somewhere else in your room and detect that it's that one and have a different scene show up there. So that's one kind of workaround for it. Having like a giant, a full table, um, we haven't really exposed all of that yet where you could be combining game boards. We're just a small team, we're 17 people. So, you know, out of that 17 people, you know, there's the manufacturing people, there's the idiot CEO not doing much work. Um, there's business development folks going out and getting games and helping, you know, um, bring new content to the system. And then, I don't know, there's probably eight programmers working on every aspect of the system. And so that uh, ranges from, you know, in the headset, there's a processor up here just doing tons of work. So there's, you know, several folks working on what's going on up here, which includes tracking the game board, tracking the wands, the tangible tracking camera lets you detect hands and stuff like that. Uh, then there's folks working on, you know, kind of the, um, the um, NDK level, this is kind of like drivers and kind of our native uh, interface. And so that's people asking about Godot, how that got implemented. This NDK kind of level is where game engines interface to Unity and Unreal. Then we have some folks that are working on 
Unreal and Unity, kind of all the goop that goes inside there, like these tools that I've been showing and, and widgets and gizmos and stuff. And uh, when anyone has free time, we create little fun games and stuff. And um, a lot of these people are bouncing around helping with all kinds of other things. Uh, SquarePig has been asking how uh, Tilt 5's been selling. Uh, it's been selling really well. It took us, you know, we started selling roughly around this time last year, but we really didn't get kind of the manufacturing going until I think November we kind of got things rolling. Excuse me, I just ate dinner. Um, and uh, we've been going in and out of stock, but we finally hit a point where we figured out how to kind of stay ahead of the demand. So um, that's pretty cool seeing a lot of units go out the door. All right, cool. All right, let's go back to the project here and let me try to, let me stop it. Actually, let me show you something else since I have it up. So a really cool feature for Till 5's SDK is everything works in real time. So when I put the glasses on right now, I see those cubes right there kind of midway through through the table. Um, and that saves a ton of time for developers. You don't have to build, deploy, put the glasses on, and then realize that you've you know, kind of goofed something up. And in fact, in the editor, as you're wearing the glasses, as you slide sliders around or move game objects around, it happens in real time. So it's pretty cool that you can um, speed speed up like alignment of things that usually is kind of problematic like you have gaps or z fighting and can take forever or, or lighting in fact let me go to the tilt 5 camera i usually don't like having a, a a sky box i like a solid color i usually like making that black let's see what that looks like so the tilt 5 system is a little bit different um, color space yeah, so this is, you know, when you have a black background, um, it also, for Mixcast, it makes compositing a lot, a lot nicer. So let me show you this. So this is a black background. You can see my hand in here not colliding with stuff. So I'm going to, oh, here, I'll do it in real time. Let's go back to, oh, can I do it real time here? Um, that's a good question. I'm going to try this. This is one of the things that uh, may not work in real time because uh, Mixcast may create its own camera based on all the settings that I just set. So I'm going to go back to Skybox. Yeah. So I lied to you a little bit. There's a couple of things you can't change real time, especially if you know, like Mixcast has duplicated all of the uh, the settings from the camera. So let me explain some of the cameras here. So there's the Tilt 5 camera that's under the Tilt 5 prefab. This is the preview camera. And of course, this all can be changed too if you want. But this is by default the preview camera that you see on your computer screen or your Android screen. And so this, I'll show you in a little bit how you can change how this is following uh, different players and kind of the behavior of it. But um, at startup, we uh, it, all the camera, the cameras. So there's two cameras for each player. Mixcast makes a camera. It, typically, this all gets pulled off of the preview camera. So when you do things like skybox, um, it'll uh, it'll pull it off here. All right. So um, you saw before I put my hand out on on the table and the skybox. I mean, there was no interference from the skybox it's way off at infinity in the game engine but if you have a skybox on like this and we'll wait for it to come up now when I put my hand in there you know it's it's clipping through my hand and I haven't explored this too much but I think there's some really cool stuff that you can do with solid color I think if you go in you pick a color that's transparent then um, you can actually have you know some other color 
that it blends when you put your hand into the mix cast scene. Let me, let's try that right now. I've been kind of curious about that because I've seen some of our devs have done that. There might be some other magic sauce in there. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, if you want to have a little bit of blending, you can do that. Also in Mixcast, there's, um, I think it's called auto segmenting, where it tries to figure out real world objects and tries to cut that out. Um, sometimes that's a good option for folks um, to do if you have like a really complicated scene with a lot of geometry and you want to still stick your hand in and, and point to, to things. Uh, Mixcast is amazing. I'm just really awesome working with this team because our system is really hard to show what the experience is like if it's just a preview on a screen with like users moving their heads around and screaming and giggling and stuff. All right, I'm going to put that back to the way I typically like it. Save it just in case it crashes. All right, so now I'm going to pull in the new utility that we've been working on. Uh, we as in everybody else, not me. Um, this is going to be a package that we're going to provide that gives you a lot of different things associated with doing UI easier, grabbing objects, things like that. So, till five utilities. I'm going to import that. And, and in fact, my co-founder Jamie built a lot of these kind of wand grabber things recently. And uh, he has to walk me through this every time I try to use it, so we'll see if I've learned enough to be able to do it live. Um, ideally, we're going to have some prefabs that you just drag in that just grab objects. Uh, so Nerdful asks, I'm live screen recording at the moment. Will this be available later to view? Uh, yeah, if I can figure out how to make YouTube save the equivalent to a VOD, I will. If I botch it, I apologize. All right, so now we have the till five utilities in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got errors. Um, I reported this earlier. Okay, we're gonna have to go fix this. Um, obviously this has not been fixed yet. So Jamie used some of the new C-sharp features where you can do a couple things at once and it's not supported on a little bit older versions. So we're gonna have to make it compatible and get that uh, rolled into it. All right, let me get... Bring this up here. I knew it was going to be a disaster. All right. So I've experienced this before and fixed it on my own magically. So the set location, position, and rotation, this is one of the things that he did that is apparently a new function inside of Unity that lets you just do it simultaneously. So we're going to have to break that out transform this game object, um, transform local position, All right, and we're going to do position, so I know it's probably something like Set local position and rotation. Oh, I have two transforms. That's why. Okay. Mm. All right. Dive in chant. Position dot local position. Oh, 
okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I need it needs to be equals position. Yes, yes. Uh, Alexander just uh, popped it in chat just as I was figuring it out. Okay. Let's try transform. We're gonna rotate rotate this game object. Um, rotation. Is it Euler angles? Question, question. Quaternion, uh, quaternion. Is that right? We'll try this. Maybe it's not a quaternion. Still upset at me. Yeah. Um, so this looks like it's quaternion. Okay. Yeah, just equals again. As someone said in the chat. <clears throat> Both types are quat. What am I doing wrong, chat room? What are my options in here? Transform rotation. You place A instead of A equal. Ah, okay, chat room says, oops, I hit a button. Just rotation. Ah, okay. Sweating heavily, uh, having to do this live. It's more embarrassing doing it live. Hi, James Campbell. I'm doing well. Thank you. Hope you're doing well as also. I was just explaining. Uh, my co-founder got really clever. And so now I have to undo the cleverness. Oh, Australia. Hi, Dave. Uh, one place I haven't been yet. Okay. Looks like we have one more error in here. So, oh, same thing, same thing. I'll just cut and paste that. Local position, local rotation. Yeah, John, I agree. Hardware is just so much easier than all this programming stuff. Like when I want like some signal to be over here, I just solder a wire. Like here I'm having to like, you know, do all this typey type stuff. I would have been done if this was hardware. All right, let's go back to Unity and see if uh, our errors have cleaned up or if more pop up. Okay, looking good. All right, so now that we have that script errors fixed, I'm gonna have to remember how to do the grabber so uh, this is going to be a prefab, so you'll just drag it in, but I have to create my own right now. So I'm going to inst uh, instantiate a empty game object, and we're going to call it wand player one. In fact, um, at some point, maybe I'll go back and show some of the stuff that exists up here in the Till5 manager. There's a lot of clever things you can do uh, without even you know, doing any of this this grabber stuff because you can just attach stuff to the wands and it'll it'll do a transform and rotation right to those game objects. Like one of these cubes, if I were to drag it onto there. Actually, I want to do that now because it's kind of fun. 
So I just attached this cube to the tip of player one's wand. I'm going to expand it to four players, one here. So right across here is the number of players. And each player has their own wands, glasses, content scale, game board, various stuff that you can play around with. So now, if I hit play, one of those cubes is going to be stuck to the end of my wand. Obviously, I'm using the old SDK that's got the wand drifts into oblivion after a few minutes. There it is. That's one of the things that's getting fixed in the new SDK. So, um, we have a bug in revision 1.3 where if your wand just kind of sits on the table for a long time. Oh, hey, it's black again. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did. Let me go fix that real quick. We were just messing with that earlier. All right. Anyway, so you can just attach stuff to different parts of the wand and it just automatically moves around, which is cool. So yeah, revision 1.4, there's a whole slew of bug fixes, including this one that annoys me when I do development where you just have the wand sitting there, something was drifting off and then it can never recover after 30 minutes or so. Let me get rid of the cube attached to the wand because we're going to do some different stuff with it. And then, since I saw I messed up the camera, we're going back to the background color. Let me make that transparent because I want to see my hands and wands when I put them in there. And tonight, it's going to get exciting too because I've got Two Town Cider House Cosmic Crisp. A delicious little cider. Thing. Uh, Sam asked if we've done anything with haptics with a stylus type device. Actually the wand does have haptics in it. Um, it's exposed in 1.3 or 1.4. I have not tried it yet. Um, so this is a good question. Andrew asked, how does this compare to what Castera was going to to do. So in a lot of ways it's similar to what we were going to do at Cast AR. So optically it works the same. So we still generate the light field that's emitted. It goes down to a game board that bounces back up. Everything else is basically different on it. So um, before Cast AR we were just brute forcing everything with the PC. Oh yeah, now I have the Mixcast fixed. And uh, that required big beefy PCs. We had a little Android box that was proprietary. You couldn't just plug it into a generic Android device like a tablet or a phone or a set-top box. You had to run it on our device, which was quite expensive. And that device was, you know, had to be pretty high performance because um, we didn't have a processor in the headset that was doing frame rate interpolation and. Um, upscaling of the frame rate and all the reprojection. So so another dev said, so glad the code worked. <laughs> How does the controller find the position, he asks, or they ask. Um, so there's two ways that our wand uh, finds its position. So down this uh, barbecue lighter looking stick, there's LEDs that are modulating, and this is pretty cool. Um, the headset has this wide field of view camera, and it's, it is synchronized. Each headset synchronized to the pattern that it's ex expecting to see. And uh, it only has to get partial patterns, too, so it's pretty robust in that case. Let me grab another wand real quick. Um, what's really neat is, because it has this modulated pattern, you can take wands and you can cross them and occlude them quite a bit without having problems, including having like eight wands, you know, like four players holding two wands at once, just crossing their wands all the time, which is really cool. And we also have an inertial measurement unit in here for doing dead reckoning and kind of high speed tracking for rotations and stuff. There's a couple of like degenerate cases in the wand if, if you like hold it like this, pointing down, the glasses can't can't see. And in fact, because the camera's a little higher, it's per, it's kind of hard to get into that position unless you really crank it down hard. Um, so typically we recommend people keep the 
the experience kind of level. And it's, it's kind of a terrible experience if you're having to do this anyway. And in most cases, the glasses can see it anyway, because if, even if you're forcing your user to do gorilla arms kind of things, you're still seeing this. So um, simplicity is what we went for. And the barbecue lighter shape was really frustrated our industrial designers. Uh, they didn't like the look of it. They thought it was you know, too reminiscent of a barbecue lighter, but everything we tried was kind of like ideal. The barbecue lighter was ideal because it's slender and it's out of the way, gives you a little reach so you can reach into the table and tap things and pick things up and anything like loops or facets or you know, antennae sticking off in different area um, tended to get in the way. Okay, all right, where are we? Where are we? Okay, I fixed my minor annoyance of background. So now let's get working on the grabber. So this is gonna allow us to pick up objects with um, rigid bodies on them which, let me check the cubes. I think they come in with, oh, no, we have to, I think we have to add a rigid body. We'll check this later. So we're gonna add a rigid body. We're gonna turn gravity off. If I don't turn gravity off, here, I'll just show you it. You know, our, our cube's just gonna, it's gone, because it's, it's fallen, Falling away, it's it's. You can see that little dot down there. It's falling through the table. It's actually kind of fun to look at. Oh yeah, there's a little dot down there. I see falling away. So, okay, we got to turn gravity off. I think that's all we really need um, to make this work. So wand player one. <laughs> And someone in the chat says, make it look like the Star Trek phaser. That would actually be pretty good ergonomically. We had looked at pistol grip, um, but there was a little bit of reluctance to do something where, you know, the wand is kind of doing something like this just because it wasn't super intuitive, you know, where you should be, you know, how you should engage with the device. I mean, it might actually be be really good, um, <clears throat> but we had to make some calls. We couldn't just you know keep experimenting forever, forever. Oh, someone was asking about uh, longer versions for someone that might be in a wheelchair. Um, I think there's software solutions, and and this grabber that I'm putting together right now, I'll show you how why I like it so much because when we set it up to do the ray cast from between your eyes through the tip out to some object way off in the distance it feels really really good it's like I can grab something across the table with very limited motion I can just be kind of arms resting on the table or resting on my lap and I can just be grabbing all kinds of stuff with without having to do a lot of reaching I think that's one of the learnings that we had from cast AR, we thought that maybe interactions would be a little bit bigger where you're reaching in and, and touching things more. Uh, turns out, you know, we're all a little bit lazy, so we like to, you know, just do minimal motions. It's, it's kind of why Xbox controllers are kind of nice, too. You can just slouch on the couch and play your game for hours. All right, so I have to get a script from Tilt 5 Utilities, so I need to put the grab manager on here. So uh, the grab manager um, is kind of the core of how this whole thing works. Um, it auto instantiates the wand identity. And so up here in wand identity, we have to set this up for which player. So this one's going to be player one. Uh, we're going to set it to the right controller. We naively think that everyone in the world's right-handed, so it's the right controller. You could set it to left if you want to do dual wielding wands. Uh, Andrew says, lazy, you mean efficient. It's true, it's true. 
Okay, so now um, when we look at Grab Manager here, there is um, little fields that we can assign things to. So what happens when we pull the trigger, press the one button, we can also, two button, whatnot, we can also assign sounds to things, which I'm a big fan of always having sounds when possible, which I just realized I didn't go find any sounds for us. We may not get any sounds. Um, so we need to have a ray cast object. This is that what it's called? It draws the line. Ray cast grabber. I'm going to try this one. Nope. Ray cast line. Maybe that's it. All right. So this pulled in a bunch of stuff in here. So there's a little bit of filtering um, just on uh, kind of slowing down the grabbing. Like if you don't filter a little bit, you'll end up with, you know, you know bouncing between objects too quickly. You kind of want to filter things down, kind of want to your, your head's kind of jost jostling around too, so you kind of want to filter that a little bit since we're ray we can raycast through your eye um, down to the game board. So you got to filter some of this stuff a little bit so you're not, um, it's not like a big lever at the tip of your wand. It makes it a little bit too difficult to grab things and you might be bouncing between, between things. And there's a bunch of settings in here too you know, kind of maximum distances and stuff. So right now it's set to forward. We'll start with that. You can also um, set pick layers on it too. So you can change layers on these objects. So we could define a layer like pickable object and set all the objects that can be picked up and moved around to have that or not. So you can isolate what's movable within the scene. And then um, there's some stickiness to it also, like you just don't want things bouncing back and forth if you're kind of on the edge of a of a, a scene. And then there's also this angle, this one's kind of cool. So you can set kind of a cone in which the, the ray will just kind of auto snap. So it looks like it's default to 15. So I think there's one more thing Thing I'm supposed to put on here. I think I'm supposed to put the grab mover on here. So let me do that. And I can drag that into trigger. Can I drag this down? I don't like it up there. That's better. I think, knock on wood, if I hit play, I should be able to put the glasses on and we should be able to pick up that one cube that I put a rigid body on. So let's see if that works. Here, I'll get all fancy. Let's go to a big mix cast. Have I bored you all yet? Yep. I did it. I did it. First time on my own without help. So now I can, with the joystick, I can move things in and out. I can pick things up and down, rotate things around. I can let go of them. And if you can see, it has a little bit of auto snapping to kind of help you find stuff. Oh, I don't have to have a rigid body. Maybe it's just collider. Let's go test that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that one's got the rigid body. It wants to float away. That's fun. All right. I kind of like that one with the rigid body that was floating away.
So it must be Collider. Turn off. I'm going to remove the rigid body. Mm. Let me rotate the scene around a little bit. So it's a little bit more lined up for what I'm experiencing. 46 people not bored? Wow. Thanks for joining me on a holiday weekend. All right. Uh, so cube it, on the right for me is going to be no box glider enabled. And I suppose I won't be able to pick it up. Oh, sorry about that. I was trying to be super fancy. So what I did is I went into cube. I got rid of the one that I put the rigid body on so it won't fly away. And I turned off the box collider because I just want to confirm. I'm going to save before it crashes. I just want to confirm my understanding of how this works. So I just probably needs a collider. Okay. That one has a collider, that one has a collider, and I can't, it won't snap to that one. Can't grab it. EBB says uh, lots of industrial uses. Yeah, we've been selling, I would say, you know, I try to track our sales kind of roughly from what I can infer. I, I just obsess on looking at the sales and probably 20% of our sales are going to non-gaming applications or more. It's pretty cool. Lots of education, lots of uh, data visualization. We just released a CAD viewer. I might have it on this machine. Maybe I'll pull it up later and we'll take a look at it. But you can import CAD models and then you can pick them apart and um, snap them back together and it takes all the standard files in like STLs and step and, and a lot of the proprietary ones like uh, whatever Rhino things like that and you can have up to four people around the the game board like using this actual snapper grabber function pulling stuff apart all right let me show you um, the, the kind of raycast through function that I like the best. So this is view direction. So we go to wand raycaster and we go view direction. And now I put the glasses on. Oh, you want to see the see that on. Maybe if I go big on this one, I'll try to remember to go back. Right now when I look down, now it's raycasting through my eyes down through the tips so I can maintain a more comfortable ergonomics on my hand and pick things up. Pull things in and out, push it out. Now I can put it way down in the table, things like that. Okay. Very good, very good. Let's see, what else do I want to do on this? Okay, I want to set up um, up to four players that can all be grabbing at once. So I'm just going to duplicate. Player two. We'll go to wand identity, set it to two. And three. If there's any Unity developers out there, they're probably cringing at how inefficient I am at doing stuff. There's probably keyboard shortcuts for just duplicating. set to four. All right, so it was that easy. So now, um, since these are all set up, and plus in the Tilt 5 Manager, right up here, I clicked the plus and minus buttons, 
we can have a we can have four players. So now you can have four players sitting around the table, picking and grabbing things. Uh, let me add another script to this and show. There's there's some scripts where you can grab and kind of gimbal in place. There's a bunch of these that are pretty cool. So. If I can remember what it's called. Is it transform local value? Nope. Oh, this one's cool, Panner. This one. This one, if I put that on player one, will let you pan the game board. So it'll actually move the, the game board around if I did it right. Oh, uh, gosh darn it. I'm sorry. I'll stop going to the big mix cast. Sorry, I'm a dummy. So I'll show you what I did. Is I pulled in a script called Panner and put on there. And then I assigned it up on the grab manager to button one. All right. In theory, yep. So now, as I move the board around, or the hold the one button down, I can move the game board through the scene. I think if, I think I can show it here. See how the game board is just moving through the scene? If I pull the trigger, then I can rotate and zoom and do other interesting stuff. Uh, now I'm uh, I'm looking for the local rotator. So there's a uh, one of these scripts will grab a rotator. This must be it. If I put this onto the prefab, let me drag this up to button two, I should be able to grab those game objects and it won't do any translation. I'll only do rotations, which is super handy for things like CAD, as you guys are talking about in chat. Is it's pretty handy for that stuff. Okay. Hmm. I must have did something wrong, or I don't understand it. That did not work. So what did I do wrong? Let's cruise on down and look at that script. Could it be orientation? Or position? Orientation sounds more like what it should be. Let's give that a shot again. No, I might need Jamie's help. I don't understand how that one works. So I'm, I feel defeated. Let's just remove that one. I only needed to show our developers how to do grabbing. So I think we can call this success. Okay, so you were all asking about, can I show the CAD stuff? So I'm gonna look away for a bit and kind of look through 
my desktop and see what I've got installed on this machine. See if I've got that CAD CAD tool. Let me close some of this down because I think that project is done. And then we get to move on to trying to figure out what kind of game we're going to make, which is probably going to be a Unity Asset Store flip, because why not? Looking for CAD. Here is a version of CAD. I don't know. Tough to say. Uh, what it's going to be like. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, it's it's a pretty old version. Oh, this is really old. <laughs> this is actually the story behind this is. Uh, this was one of my weekend projects that I put together and the team hated it so much because of the uh, the way I did the wand that they built the grabber scripts they uh, and they totally refactored the entire the entire thing so if you go to our website you can see the new one is far more you know robust than this but yeah I you know, this is our glasses. I can see all the components. Like here is our our uh, head tracking camera. It's this really wide field of view camera. You know, this is our tangible tracking camera. So this is a high speed narrow field of view camera. And this is one of the projector bodies. And then I can start pulling out the individual components. Like here's a flex circuit that goes to the projector. This is the micro display, so this little quarter inch display that generates all the images. Uh, there's polarizing films, and there's projection lenses, oh, and the, the best part is you can put it all back together again. What'd you all think? Okay, uh, let's get a clean project going. And let's start thinking about what game we're gonna we're gonna make. So I'm open to suggestions. What do you think we should make? I I really like doing multiplayer experiences, so I think it needs to be multiplayer. Oh, by the way, the CAD thing is for is free on our website. Um, we also have a medical image uh, viewer on our website um, that lets you load Nifty, DICOM, and a couple other file formats. So these are the type of formats that CT scanners and uh, MRIs and these um, things that um, somehow like get all your veins and stuff and can show them. So that, that's pretty full. It's an, a that's pretty fun, it, and it's free as well. Um, one of our team is working on a protein folding viewer, which is pretty cool. So there's these kind of standard files. Oh, someone asked about PCB CAD. Um, I've been looking at that to see if there's a way um, to do that. Obviously, you can use your PCB tool to output a step file and then look at it. But I was trying to think if there was a, like a stack up manager for PCBs that you could do that could take in Gerbers and then you could play around with, um, you know, the core, the pre preg and all that stuff. And you can actually visualize it. And then beyond my program programming capabilities, it'd be pretty cool to uh, see electric field interactions. <laughs> Caterpiggle says, I hate folding proteins. Yeah, it's just like folding laundry. It sucks. Yeah, chat room saying if you export your PCB and STL step CAD, it will work. I should try that sometime. All right, what type of game should we make? Actually, maybe we start, let's go look at the asset store and see if anything inspires us.
that's the cool thing about the Unity Assets Store. If you're not too precious about what you're doing, you can get a lot of really cool stuff to start off with. Yeah, the MRI viewer is really cool. If you load in a file, and we have it preloaded with one that's in um, a CAT scan, you can do the transfer function. There's a bunch of controls for transfer function and density and whatnot. You can isolate like the brain, you can isolate bone, you know, different tissue densities. All right, let's see what they've got going today. Wow, it looks like lots of animal assets this week. Holy cow. Animal assets on sale. <laughs> I tried to put um, this asset, it's like super high-end rendering into our headset. I, I couldn't even I couldn't even get it to run on my wimpy little laptop. Like let alone get it going in the glasses. Let's look at the new assets and see if anything's exciting in here. Leg animator. This is third person. A little third person controller. Oh, someone's talking about Rampage. Rampage would be a fun one. Oh, I see Vectrexer in here. Hi, Vectrexer. Quantum Vector Arcade Port. Oh, I like Quantum. Uh, that's the one where you use the trackball and you have to kind of loop around the little particles. A game of operation, that could be a fun one. Uh, someone in the uh, chat room asked what Unity is. So Unity is a game engine, and there's a, a couple of really popular game engines out there. Unity, you know, it's been used for quite a few um, kind of medium to low end experiences and maybe a couple high end. And then there's Unreal, which is really high end typically um, game experiences. And there's Godot, which is an open source um, game engine, which is looking really promising. So I'm su suggesting catapults. That could be fun, you know. A uh, it reminds me of all of those artillery games when you say catapults, like scorched earth, worms. I've been wanting to do a. Uh, Rampart for a long time, classic Atari game, where each the four corners of the game board would be your castles, and you have to do something like move a shield to protect your castle from the bouncing fireballs. All right, let's go back to the asset store and see what's available. So basically, um, Unity is game engine, so it has all the infrastructure for doing graphics and sound and input, and our system runs directly inside of these game engines to generate you know, what you see on the game board and, and how you interact with it. Um, Unity um, and Unreal both have asset stores where creative people can post their applications or art or sound and then you can buy it for a nominal, a nominal price and then uh, add it to your game. Sci-Fi City. <laughs> iPhone repair simulator. That would be kind of fun, you know, trying to like heat the screen and like use a suction cup with the wand to try to pop the screen off if you go too aggressive, it cracks. Apple might get mad though. Although I hear they're getting into right to repair. Warlords is a good game 
you're right, Vectrex. I think Tempest would be cool too. One of my favorite vector arcade games. That's well, definitely pretty. Two hundred dollars. Might be a little rich for my my blood right now. Hmm. A junkyard. A junkyard simulator? Not another dev says Am Amiga sim would be cool to have, but probably a bit too complex. Yeah. Hmm. This one's kind of interesting. What can you do in a junkyard? Could make it like a job simulator. You have to scrap the cars and then crush them before you run out of space. Let's see what comes in these assets. That's something you always have to watch out for for these assets. They'll they'll show you a bunch of like cool things like cars getting crushed. But, you know, it's kind of left up to the uh, you to figure out how to make that stuff work. So if you look at the package contents, you can go in and look at what scenes they have. <laughs> Junkyard Wars. Someone said in the chat, yeah. It has a bunch of prefabs in here. So for those of you that don't know Unity, prefabs are just a uh, collection of things pulled together. Um, it could be geometry, it could be scripts, it could be sound, and it's just all together in one prefab. Square Peg just asked a really good question, and this is very relevant this week. So Square Peg says, speaking of rights to repair, do we own Till 5 headsets? As in, you won't brick the headset when it's end of life? We believe you own your own hardware when you buy it. Like, we don't tie it to the cloud and then brick it. So Magic Leap this week just killed off their first generation headset that people paid I don't I think they were close to four thousand dollars and it wasn't that long ago and now they're gonna be just worthless you know hunks of optics and plastic which is really sad in fact um, we have a roadmap as we start to think about gen 2 and 3 there's no reason for us to um, not be compatible like a, a lot of things that we'll do in the future at some point is there'll be higher resolution or lighter weight or something, but there's no reason to not make it backwards compatible. It's like a PC, like in general, you know, a PC you can, you know, until it's just like so old, you can't run, you know, a little bit older software. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big right to repair. You know, on the flip side, you open up your Tilt 5 glasses, there's a lot of, like, automated calibration we do. If you don't get it back together exactly the same, you may have to send it to us to run through the uh, calibration systems, but I would do that for you guys. It's, it's hard to repair some of this stuff, right? It's awful small. Like, some of the, the stuff in our headset is awfully small. Uh, someone asked if uh, Tilfy will be available on Amazon uh, internationally. Someday, yes. Um, it's it's tricky for us to do Amazon right now. We're still kind of a small company, so 
Amazon, you know, takes a big cut, which is okay. We have margin to, to do that. But like if we wanted to distribute in Europe through Amazon, then we have to get enough volume over there and it's just kind of money sitting there that could be used for other useful stuff. So it's kind of tricky for us to do that. But you can, uh, if you're in Europe, you can order a system and it doesn't take that long to get there. All right, I think Junkyard's interesting. We'll keep that in the back of our mind. Okay. I think there's some fun things we can do. Let's keep looking. Here's one with a cat. What is this? Oh, oh, maybe it's their mascot is the cat, but it looks like there's lots of traps. Oh, so, so Stubby says, remember Portable Hole in the old Roadrunner cartoon? Um, we actually had a little game that one of our um, internal devs put together that was called Portable Hole for the longest time. It was kind of a, a thing we put together for trade shows. So you would, um, you could get people in and out and demo the system really easy. So the player, the visitor to the booth would use the wand to move a hole around on this platform and then the till five employee would be a ball rolling around trying to not get in, get eaten by the hole and so the hole would get bigger as the hole consumed things so on this platform there was lots of tasty things for the hole to eat and it was a little bit geared towards you know the visitor is going to eventually win by eating enough stuff so the hole gets big and um, the tilt five personnel falls in. We actually, he continued adding to that and turned it into a full-fledged game that's on our lab page. So if you go there, you can uh, download, it's called Dice Tower. It's, uh, it's really uh, an interesting game. It takes a little bit of like thinking um, to kind of get up to speed because you can have up to four players around the table and one of you has to be the whole but you get to select um, the other objects that are moving around. So you can be like little meeples or dice and each of them have different properties and you have to try to stay away from the hole. And if one of you doesn't select the hole, it forces you to be the hole. And it, actually the hole is a pretty fun thing to play. But yeah, it's free, go check it out. You can play with your family. It's um, an interesting asymmetrical game. And that's the cool thing about Till 5 is you can be asymmetrical. Well, this asset's cool because it has a lot of like traps and, and stuff, but I don't think I don't think that's for us today. Let's keep looking. Military too. You know the old classic tanks could be fun, like the Atari tanks. I had so much fun as a kid doing that. It's like this is just a lot of military stuff. This would be a good start for a Command and Conquer. Holy cow. One of my favorite 90s games. Red Alert. We used to use, um, you know, Ethernet, or not Ethernet, um, null modem cables, you know, and stick someone behind a wall and we'd like kind of snake it behind through the door we'd play against each other someone asked if it's me yeah it's me yeah just a little bit heavier after uh covid but 4d chess 3d chess they're saying a rube goldberg game that would be cool mousetrap meets rube goldberg that could be cool Age of Empires town development. You know, there are a bunch of pre-made um, like templates. Uh, 
Where is it in here? I think it's templates. Check out third person. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear this, but our neighbors are drunkenly singing right now. Sagan says, uh, Vic-20 tank versus UFO would be interesting. I think I remember that game. Like, the, they fly over the White House and you had to blow them up before they blew holes in your White House or in the building. Renegade. It's GTA 5. We could also go to GitHub. I found a lot of really cool stuff. Like I found a really neat spherical Pac-Man that you, your Pac-Man going around um, spheres and tubes and stuff like that. Of course, we could never release that officially, but it was pretty easy to convert that project. It was a full Unity project, and we just dragged the Tilfi plugin. In. Uh, Stubby said Marble Madness. Well, uh, I've been working on that. Actually, maybe I should show that off really quick. And cancel this. So we have a, a marble roll maze game that we use just for testing. It's just one level of a marble roll maze. And I hacked it apart one weekend and turned it into this. So it's loading now. It's a very big project. But it's a, a full editor that you um, can have up to four players editing your marble maze at the same time. And then you can press play and actually see how well your maze works out. That Electronic Fool asked if I ever played Tetrasphere. I haven't. Is that one of the 3D Tetrises? Mm, this cider is really good. Oh, it takes forever to load Unity. The sphere is flat. I missed it. Water balloon. Water balloons was the suggestion. All right, here it is. So this is the um, editor that I put together. So if we look at this, um, this is you know kind of a marble roll game. Actually, I probably need to set it up. Be the right number of players or I can't demonstrate it. Try and set up for one player it looks like. So here's the basic map. You just roll your marble down across here, you know, jump to your goal, but then you of course you can edit the the maze, make it really complicated. And uh, the more players you add, um, the more fun it becomes because you are all editing the map together and you're kind of seeing what people are editing and you kind of know what's going to happen, but people are sneaking around and moving your stuff and you're moving their stuff. And when you click play, it's a hell of a lot of fun to play. Um, sometimes you make maps that aren't even achievable and sometimes you do. So let me start this kind of see if I can demonstrate this. So we have this predefined one maze. Um, you can get it off our website. It's part of Tilt 5 Experiences, which is a bunch of mini games. And um, you can try and you can see all the, the different pieces put together for this one map. But now uh, with Marble Maker is what we're kind of calling it. Um, which is going to be released fairly soon. 
hopefully, if the team lets me do it. This is a bunch of my stuff I've added to it. So you can kind of see across the bottom here is all your controls of what you can do. So if I go out here a little ways, actually, let me, I've got a little slider here. I can kind of shrink things down for you. All right, so here's, here's a little jump to the goal right here. So let's do some editing on this. So I'm going to put it in free move mode. Well, that's interesting. I must have broke it last time I was in here. Hmm. Can I add new, new items? Ah, now yeah, here we go. I can add new new items. So I've got this little piston I can put here. Then I can duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So hopefully you can see this all okay. For some reason I must have broke it last time I was in here. I can't move the goal, which is unfortunate. And I can't move some of these other objects, but I can move the new things that I'm putting in there. So let's see. So I can put a whole bank of pistons in. I can put these little boost pads. So when the the marble hits it, it goes boosting. So I can do really mean things like put them sideways. So this ramp has some boost pads, but I can just put them sideways. So if you try to use the pad, it's um, it's going to just shoot you off into oblivion. And then I can add, let's see, what else do I have here? I have little platforms that move back and forth. I have hammers. You know, various little ramp pieces. So let's go ahead and build a little, little tiny little tiny maze and see if I can pull it off. This is, uh, we call this one the, the Bacon Highway. Let's see. I need some way to get over. This is all usually pretty fun stuff. All right, I should be able to complete this. Okay, so there's a little run button over here. I'm gonna hit the run button. Yep, confirm, I'm gonna run it. So now I pull my trigger. Where's my audio going? Hold on one second. There it is. So now I can start rolling, rolling along. And this is just running in the editor. So I hit those, <laughs> I hit those boosters, which were supposed to send me off into nowhere land, but I, I managed to hit the goal anyway. Anyway, that's a, that's a pretty fun little uh, project we're working on. Uh, music light visualizer. Actually, I have, I have a cool little visualizer um, that I bought off the asset store. Um, so it does FFTs and visualizes music. Um, it looks really cool on our system because you can wear the glasses and play MP3s through it. I hadn't actually thought of like turning it into something that, you know, we release. But, you know, maybe, you know, maybe. Uh, do some mind altering mushrooms and uh, stare into your tilt five as uh, an application. All right, I haven't quite settled on what I want to do yet because it took 
Tower defenses are good. Yeah. Orcs must die. That'd be cool. All right, let's do a really quick search through the asset store. I don't know. I wasn't quite intending to do the stream tonight, so we may have to pick it up tomorrow and do a little thinking on what we're going to build, but maybe I can find something really cool that we can do quick. Let's look at the bestseller templates. Oh, Spencer, I like that idea for Marble Maker. If there was different objectives, um, we could easily do that. We have a prefab, which is just the goal. And currently the first person gets the goal wins. Um, I added a couple features when I was hacking on it. We have coins now that you can drop in. And when you pick up the coins and then you pull the trigger, it gives you a speed boost to help you get to the end faster. Um, but yeah, different objectives. Hmm. One of the features I want to add to Marble Maker is the ability, everything gets saved out to a JSON file, which my team teased me about quite a bit because I use JSON uh, files, whatever, shut up. And, uh, but one of them had, a, one of the guys had a really good suggestion is at the goal, when you reach the goal, in the editor, you could choose, you could type in the, the file you want to load next so you could make entire series of files and potentially like till five users could make their own uh, series of maps that kind of you know progress through and that you just made me think if you had different goals you could have a choose your own adventure so it's kind of you know, if you make it to goal one two or three each one of those may take you down a different path so it's kind of different each time but yeah, it would be definitely would be really cool where people could make their own, like use the editor, make all of their their levels, and then share them with each other. Yeah, that's right, John. If it works, it works. I uh, I'm I will never be a master programmer, so whatever. I, you uh, Stubby says uh, virtual pottery wheel. We've done that. Actually, I have a game um, I should finish up. It's, um, I call it um, Lathe Hero. So it's up to three players and you have a little spindle of wood and it shows you a template of the shape you're supposed to make and you use the wand and you have to try to carve it within 30 seconds to be as close as possible. And then I measure the volume within like a, you know, the rotation of what the shape was supposed to be and whoever has like the closest wins is pretty funny yeah i don't know what the <laughs> someone in the chat's like what did they want xml i'm like i don't i don't know next thing they'll be telling me i need to use proto buffs i don't even know what they are but i know they're Oh, there's a card game. This is cool. <laughs> Stubby, no. Um, the, the pottery wheel was kind of cool. The cool thing about the pottery wheel is um, this was a really old like test app that we built where we actually took a uh, some other game object that we had and, and the programmer just made it really flat and it like automa it already rotated and then uh, it kind of looked like a pottery wheel when they kind of squished it down. And then you could use the wand to extrude clay onto this thing. It turned into flying spaghetti monsters really fast, but it was kind of amusing. Uh, John asked if these internal games we're talking about are on Git. Uh, some are, a lot aren't. Usually what happens is a new feature comes online and one of us just goes home on a weekend and like implements something and we know it's not gonna be very good, but it's just to like test haptics or test something new on the wand or test layers um, between each user. We should put more stuff up. Um, I should, I mean, 
I, there's actually a uh, zombie game that I, I should take a look at. That could be a fun thing to look at. Someone reminded me I built this eons ago, and it's a voxel zombie shooter. <laughs> oh boy, I'm just looking through my Unity stuff. Desert buses. So I built a three-player version of the classic desert bus, but it's called Desert Buses now. And so for those of you that don't know, back in the 90s, uh, the US government was getting really worried that video games were making kids violent and they were bringing a bunch of video game companies in to Congress to talk about violence in video games. And Penn and Teller, the comedians, were making some kind of game. Um, and they decided to add a um, hidden game into it called um, Desert Bus, which is the world's most realistic bus simulator where you drive from Phoenix to Las Vegas in real time at like 45 miles an hour it takes something like eight hours and you drive i guess that freeway is mostly a straight line so you just drive this bus straight for hours and hours and the steering is a little wobbly so you can't just leave the joystick you can't leave a weight on the joystick trigger button you actually have to be there steering constantly oh stubby says it's on steam for free <laughs> nice um so to get your first point because it's the world's most realistic game and video games were so realistic and violent or were so realistic kids were losing their minds or something uh, to get your first point you have to make it to vegas once you get to vegas you get your first point then you turn around and go back to phoenix to get your second point and third and fourth and whatever and it takes eight hours each time if you run off the road you have to wait in real time for a tow truck to come pick you up and take you all the way back to phoenix um, there's actually a, quite a few charity events uh, now where people play it. I think it's over the U.S. Um, Thanksgiving holiday or thereabouts where people do marathons all weekend. They play Desert Bus. Um, there's a really cool comedy group, or they used to do comedy. I don't know if they still do, called Lodi, Loading Ready Run. And uh, they would do a charity event and raise money for Child's Play. Uh, anyway, I this was I built desert buses over a year and a half ago or something. It was when we got multiplayer going, and so I made a three-player desert buses, and it, it's it's top-down desert bus with three buses that are wobbly, and you have to constantly give them input. And if two buses touch, game over. Or if you run off the ru the the um, road. Uh, game over. Oh, um, someone says Desert Bus for Hope. That's the name of the 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 charity event. And uh, it was pretty funny. So I brought it in. I'm like, haha, everyone, we're gonna play Desert Buses. And we played for a few minutes. And then I went back to my office. And I came back, and people were still playing it like 30 or 40 minutes later. And all this kind of meta game that surfaced on top of it is like they were like trying to pull in front of each other you know, and slow down and cause each other to crash. It actually turned into a pretty fun little game. Fun in a terrible way. Oh, uh, I'm looking through some of my old games. Uh, curling Master. So this is uh, Canadian curling. So it's three players. So one person pushes the stone. Meanwhile, you have two other people on the side of the game board with br br uh, brooms sweeping to try to get it into the target. I think this this might be uh oh I don't have the right editor installed. I think this is the one I, I should update this one. This would be good to update on the stream. It'd be a good kind of wrap up for tonight. If I don't destroy it, upgrading to a different version that I've got installed. 2023-2 is what it was built in. I've got 
three, three. What could go wrong? Okay, everyone cross your fingers. It's giving me a uh, I guess, uh, someone asked about virtual Lego. I have a couple Lego games uh, that I put together, and one of them we use at trade shows. Um, Unity has some free Lego assets that you can download. It's official Lego licensed stuff that um, they supplied a few years ago. I made one that had snapping where you could run your character around and it would ray cast down and snap bricks and you, would, you could build things. And that was uh, not super easy to demo at trade shows, so then I dumbed it way down and made a version where you just could build platforms or break platforms. And that was much better for trade shows because there was very little skill needed. That's the challenge. When we go to trade shows, we have like 40 or so third-party games out there that you can go find for tilt five but they're not great for trade shows because there's menus and a lot of stuff that you have to go through and you know a lot of them progress along as you play so it gets more and more difficult for new users that step up at the beginning of the day so we build a lot of like little vignettes for trade shows all right let's get this up here yep this looks like the right one i don't know what's going to happen i built this uh eons ago and it may be very broken. So what we have here, is you got this little game character, he's kind of squatting down now. He's a little voxel police guy. And, wait, is that right? Is that the character? Anyway, you have a little guy that can run and hide between things and you use the wand to point at what you want to fire at. Um, so here, I'm just gonna I'm gonna send it. I will just send it and see what happens. Doesn't have mixed cast. Let's see. Press one to start. It's not starting. Mixed cast isn't going. Okay, this could be kind of a good one since the team was wanting me to get this going again. Uh, John Smith says be good for games like Bolt Action. I haven't haven't tried that. Okay, let's take a look at things here. Okay, so this is a pretty old version of the Till Five Manager because it doesn't have multiplayer. Oh boy, that's gonna be fun uh, so I have a thing called point position hooked to the wand so point position I, I need to upgrade this to be multiplayer that'd be great because it's it's actually kind of fun um, Point position is a script, has a script on it. So I must be getting the transform of the wand, where it is in 3D space. Wand pointer, target. Oh, okay, target is a UI element and floor that's the floor of the scene, so I must be colliding with the scene. Let's take a look at this script. Yeah, 
at the start, I add a line component. Yeah, I saw that working. I have a color cyan to white. It starts off cyan and turns white. Uh, every frame, I'm doing a ray from wand pointer transform position. Looks like I'm angling it down at 45. Again, that was me trying to get your wrist in a comfortable position instead of like being. I look for hits. Uh, so Raycast hits something. Looking for the if it's the floor, I'm sure this is not efficient. Yeah, so if, if it's the floor I hit, which is, you know, hitting somewhere out on the board, I move the pointer to that hit position, and I draw a line to it. Uh, okay. Um, Everyone's still you can stop crossing your fingers. It didn't work, but it mostly worked. Uh, so there's a character. Somehow I'm making the character look at the target. Where's the character in here? Must be player. I just want to look at all of this stuff first because it might be hard to repair if I break it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out the Tilt 5 prototype and start fresh. Well, I'm not going to actually... Uh, I don't think I have to delete it out because I think um, the team made an upgrade. But I do have to delete the Tilt 5 folder under Assets. Gun tip. I bet this agent script is pointing the character at I can't even remember what I did last week, let alone like a year ago or more. And it makes it even more complicated sometimes because, you know, this was some assets I found on Unity Asset Store, which I thought looked cool. And so I just grafted a bunch of my stuff into it. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff still in here, so you could control the character but with the uh, keyboard still, it looks like. All right, I'm just going to make the uh, assumption that it's going to be okay if I blast all this stuff. Now, here's a, a thing. If you're upgrading a TIL 5 project and you've ran it once, Unity likes to grab a hold of files and not let go of them. So we have to actually close this and start again and reload it before I start deleting the, the folder with all the TIL 5 stuff. Well, Nerdful, I'm almost done for tonight. I, uh, I ate one street taco, but that was not enough food for me tonight. I'm going to pick up tomorrow. Okay. Let's just see if we can get this thing going. We're going to blow up the Tilt 5 directory. Nuked. Why did you pop up? All right, Tilt 5 Prototype's got lots of problems now. But I'm going to import the new Tilt 5 plugin. 
let's see if the upgrade process can work on something that's like a year and a half old. good all right upgrade to tilt five all right let's make it four player we got errors uh, okay the upgrade didn't figure out that the game boards all should be this, the one game board we have in the scene, so that's an easy fix. That's still there. I'm a little worried. I forgot to look at the top. I don't know what the script was. Yikes. one's asking how old I am. Uh, pretty damn old. I was just thinking the other day, I started doing YouTube probably about 15 years ago. That's a big portion of my life I've been doing YouTube stuff. All right, uh, let me bring in Mixcast. Drag Mixcast into Assets. Hopefully that automatically works so you can see it. Am I boring you all? 29. Yeah, I wish. I wish I was 29. Someone says they remember back in the early days when I was building a light gun game. Yeah, yeah. I was actually contracted to do that. Someone wanted me to make a light gun game so you could um, just run video through it and like shoot stickers on the screen. It was kind of funny. It never got produced. It was not that great of an idea, but... All right, let's see how broken it is. I don't see Mixcast. <laughs> it seems hung too. It's completely hung. Well, that's fun. It's hung making noise. Love it. Some fine tuning required, yeah. All right, I think I figured out what I wanna do with uh, the next couple live streams. I think we're going to try to fix this. We're going to try to make it multiplayer. I think that's a good start. And then we'll just, together, we'll all, we'll all keep thinking about what the, the new game is. Come on, let me... St <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> 
It's someone in the chat room. It may be leaking lag. Close it quick. No. I think it's three finger salute is what we're going to have to do. All right. Uh, got it. It had, when I looked at uh, under device manager, it had 36 things running. So something's going bad. All right, well guys, I think I'm gonna end it there tonight. I'm gonna pick it up again tomorrow at some point, but you know, I think it was pretty fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see where we go tomorrow. And uh, for those of you in different time zones that stayed up late, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, as a reminder, Tilt 5 is on sale uh, right now. So we just turned six years old. So we're doing a big sale for two player and three player systems so go grab a, at least a two player system and make some uh, you know make some games and then uh, we have our lab page once you make a game we can put it on the lab assuming it runs that's <laughs> that's kind of our requirement it's got to run and uh, you can you can be on the on the page and obviously can't be offensive and all that fun stuff it can be mildly offensive we're kind of Kind of somewhat offensive here. Let me uh, let me find the Tilt Five um, commercial <laughs> that we did this last week. I don't know if any of you saw it, but um, uh, yeah, uh, YouTube has been taking down taking it down. Whenever we try to do like uh, pro paid promotion on it, they just knock it down and say it's too shocking of content. There it is. Yeah, I have no clue why they want to just kick us off uh, YouTube all the time. <laughs> Someone guessed I was 56 years old. Oh man, I need to go run around the block and uh, lose some weight. <laughs> anyway, uh, hope. Oh, glad you guys liked it. All right, I'm uh, gonna head out for the night. Thanks for uh, 